Hello, pre-algebra, and welcome to lesson 9.2, uh, where we're going to be representing linear functions. All right, so uh, we looked at functions. We spent um, two days on functions, right? We did some problems, so hopefully you have mastered that, and now we're going to work with them a little bit more. All right, so... Solving linear functions. An equation such as y equals 60 times x is called the linear equation. A linear equation is an equation whose graph is a line. So the solution of a linear consists of two numbers, one for each variable, that make the equation true. And um, a linear function right is different from a linear equation because it is a function in which the graph of the solutions form a straight line one way to find solutions is to make a function table so a function table shows the values for x and y in the function rule now remember we were able to play around with uh, linear equations and turn them into functions right um, remember how we did that, and that's going to be important to what we do today. All right, so this table part, though, this is another way to get at this. So in this table, right, we can use a table to solve linear functions. And so what we're going to do, if we have a um, linear equation like we have here, y equals 7x. We're simply going to choose some values. In this case, I've decided that we would choose four values, and we can choose any values. But it is useful to have usually a negative number, zero, and then two more numbers. And so I've chosen negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And notice they went here in our table. Okay. Step 2 then is to evaluate the expressions to find the value of y. So what we're going to do now in step, um, in step 2, we are going to evaluate the expression and solve for y given the x that we have randomly chosen. So here we have y equals 7 and then we're going to substitute negative 1 because it's x into our x. So y equals 7 times negative 1 that's negative 7. And the last thing we're going to do in our last column here is we're going to write Right, our two values, our x value and our y value, as a relation. So we have negative 1, because we chose it here, and negative 7, which is our y value here. All right, I'm going to erase these. And now we're going to fill in the rest of our table. So. Our next one here for 0 is going to be y equals 7 times 0. That means that y equals, right, 7 times 0 is 0. And that means that our coordinates are going to be x coordinate, 0, y coordinate, 0. All right next is 1, so that means this is y equals 7 times 1. 7 times 1 is 7, so that means that we have 1, 7, as we write those as an ordered pair. And then lastly, y equals 7 times x, if x is 2, we would write 2 there. That means that y is 14, which means that we have an ordered pair of 2 oops, and 14. So that's one way to solve it, right? And we have four possible solutions, or four solutions. Negative 1, negative 7, 0, 0, 1, 7, and 2, 14. And we 
we've written them out here. Okay, so that's one way to solve these, and that is using the table. So here we have an example. Games cost $8 to download onto a cell phone. Ringtones cost $1. Find four solutions of 8x plus y equals 20 in terms of the number of games, which is x, and ringtones, y. Darcy can buy with $20. Explain each situation. So we need to, the first thing we need to do is we need to rewrite this equation as a, um, so we can solve for y. So we need this to be written so that it is y equals something. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to subtract negative 8x from both sides. So that means y equals 20 minus 8x. All right, this should be nothing new for you. All right, so now that we have our new equation with y there, we can, like we did on our box, or our table, I should say, And this is our sort of pair. All right, so I did ask for us to come up with four of these. So here are four poems. All right, and so we can just choose four random values. So let's choose. One, two, one quarter, and five. All right. And now we fill in our box. So this is going to be y equals 20 minus 8 times 1. So uh, 8 times 1 is 8, so 20 minus 8 is 12, which means that this is x, oops, sorry, 1 and 12. All right, y equals 20 minus 8 times 2. 8 times 2 is 16, 20 minus 16 is 4. That means that we have an ordered pair of 2 and 4. Okay, this one's a little trickier. y equals 20 minus 8 times 1, 4. And if we do out that math, right, we're going to find out that the y equals 18, which means that this is 1 over 4. 4, 18 is an ordered pair. All right, and 5, if we substitute 5 in, equals 20 minus 8 times 5. That's 40. That's going to be negative 20, which means that we have 5, negative 20. Okay. Now that we've done that, we were asked to explain each solution. I'll just run by through these real quick. So here, for our first solution, 112, ordered pair of 112, this is telling us that she can buy one game and 12 ringtones because ringtones were Y and games were X. Our next one, 24, this tells us that she, Darcy can buy two games and four ringtones for her $20. This one here, this one tells us that she can buy one fourth of a game and 18 green tones. Well, there's a problem here. You can't, I've never in my, in my video game days, I have never been able to 
and buy just a quarter of a video game. So this solution doesn't make sense in the context of our question. Okay, and then la but you would need to write that right. To explain it, you would need to say this does not make sense in the in this situation or in the context of this problem. All right, and our last one five. This one basically says that she can buy five games and negative 20 ringtones. Well, the problem in the real world is you can't really buy negative 20 ringtones. So again, the solution really doesn't work in the scenario that we have been given. All right. The other thing that we are going to be asked to do is to graph a linear function. So when we graph these, we need to note that the x-coordinate of the point at which the graph crosses the x-axis, and this is the x-axis here, the one titled x, so that whole line all the way down there, that is our x-axis, and our y-axis is up here. So. Um, the x-coordinate of the point at which the graph crosses the x-axis is the x-intercept. The y-coordinate of the point at which the graph crosses the y-axis is the y-intercept. Since the two points determine a straight line, a simple method of graphing a linear function is to find the points where the graph crosses the x-axis and the y-axis and connect them. In other words, if we can find the point where it crosses y-axis, which is always going to be here, meaning always on the y-axis, but it, it's not always going to be 3 or whatever that this line represents here. Right, and we can find where it crosses the x-axis here, then we can, and we know that these are straight lines. We can then draw our straight line and notice, right, this is actually going to be pretty easy for me to do. There we go. That last part wasn't very straight. Okay, and if, right, I could draw that a little straighter. But what I want to point out here is that this point here, because it crosses the y-intercept at 0, this is going to be a value. Let's go ahead and call it, right? Um, or this is going to be the x value, actually. Um, so where it crosses the y-axis is the y-intercept. The y-intercept here is 3. So that means this is 0. 3, and this point here is, I wanted to do that in a different color, my apologies, do that in that green, here, this point is 1, 2, x2, y, 0. Notice in both of those we have a zero. So if we can figure that out, if when we're given problems, we can graph those and we can graph our line. Okay, let's try that. So graph negative 2x plus y equals 4. To find the x-intercept, this is a reminder, let y equals 0. And to find the y-intercept, let x equals 0. And so we're going to be solving, right? We're going to go ahead and do this. So we're going to start to find the x-intercept. We're going to substitute 0 for y. So that means we have negative 2x plus 0 equals 4. Then we're going to go ahead and solve that out. So that is negative 2x equals 4. Right? We divide, remember by negative 2, divided by negative 2, so that means x equals negative 2 in this situation. So this means that we have negative 2, 0. Okay, I'm going to have to erase this for our y-intercept. OK, 
Okay. So again, we're going to have negative 2. And this time, to find the y-intercept, we're going to make x 0. So that's going to be 0 plus y equals 4. And now we are solving for y. Well, this is going to be easy. Negative 2 times 0 is 0, plus y equals 4, which means that y equals 4. So that means that our second one here is going to be 0, because we said x is 0, and y equals 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph these. Negative 2, 1, 2, 0. And 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we get out a, a ruler would be best, but Mr. Jones doesn't have one to draw on his computer here. So he's going to attempt a straight line. And if we had a ruler, we could continue that out at the same slope. And we would have a straight line. OK. So that's how we do that. Remember, when we need to find the x-intercept, we let y be 0, and same here. And the reason for that is what was on the previous slide. All right, one more example here. Um, after x hours of driving, there are y gallons of gasoline remaining in a car. For Becca's car, the situation can be represented by 1.8x plus y equals 18. So the first part here is asking us to state the x and y intercepts and then graph the equation. So let's find the x intercept. It's going to be 1.8x plus 0 equals 18. Remember the previous slide, when we do the x intercept, y is always 0. So that's going to be easy. This is 18x equals, sorry, 1.8x equals 18. And that means so when we divide that out, so that x equals 10. So here we have 10, 0. That's one set or ordered pair. Let's get rid of that. Now let's work on the y-intercept. So the y-intercept means that we're solving for y. So this is going to be 1.8 times 0 plus y equals 18. Well, 0 times 1.8 is 0. So really, that just means that y equals 18. That means here we're going to write 0, 18. Okay. And then it says to graph the, graph the equation. And so when we do that, we just have to graph these two points here. So 10, let's, may, let's let these stand for 5. So 5, 10, 10, 0. Point goes there. <coughs> And 0, 8. So 0, 18, 5, 10, 15, 20. So it's going to put it about right there. And then we, oh, my dot's missing. 0, 10 is going to be here. So we draw a straight line. That was most certainly not a straight line. Try that again. There we go. And we actually don't need to go down here. Ooh, we don't need to go down there. We can just draw from in this quadrant right here. There we go. Now the second part is interpret the x and y intercepts. So to interpret these, Right. If x is standing for hours of driving, this means that if Becca drives 10 hours, 
there will be zero gallons in her car left. So she will be out of gas after 10 hours of driving. And the y-axis tells us that currently she has 18 gallons in her gas tank because if she were to drive zero miles hours, she would have 18 gallons of gasoline still in her tank. And that's how we would do this interpret part when you're asked to interpret. All right, that's it. I hope that was helpful. And uh, of course, if you have questions, let me know. But uh, hopefully that was helpful. And we will check in tomorrow. Have a great day.